Hey everybody, my name is Jared and I am a Master Mason in the state of Mississippi in the United States of America. And we are still in the third section of the Entered Apprentice Lecture as it is given in the state of Mississippi. And the next portion reads, Its covering is no less than a clouded canopy or starry decked heaven, where all good Masons hope at last to arrive by the aid of that theological ladder which Jacob saw in his vision ascending from earth to heaven, the three principal rounds of which are denominated faith, hope, and charity, and which admonish us to have faith in God, hope in immortality, and charity to all mankind. The greatest of these is charity, for faith may be lost in sight, hope ends in fruition, but charity extends beyond the grave through the boundless realms of eternity. Well, as we go through the lecture, this gets more difficult to try to expound upon because it explains itself. So uh, let's uh, try to talk about this a little bit more. Uh, its covering is no less than a clouded canopy or a starry decked heaven. I have not been in a lodge, but I have seen pictures of a lodge where they actually paint the ceiling uh, in some sort of way that makes it look like the sky. Uh, the ceiling is the sky uh, or in some way denoting the heavens. Uh, so I think that's a pretty neat thing uh, that some lodges do that and you can even find ones that put zodiac symbols uh, on the ceiling and a whole bunch more things. So uh, it does have some important symbolism to it as well. Uh, where all good Masons hope at last to arrive. Uh, I believe the real simple explanation for this is just us trying to say that, that even though Freemasonry itself is not a religion, we do hope one day each of us to be able to approach the divine. And, and generally in most all religions, uh, it's seen as divinity as being up in the heavens. So then we get into more uh, biblical references talking about the theological ladder that uh, Jacob mentioned his vision I'll let you go read the Bible for all the rest of that story if you're not familiar with it but we get into the the principal rounds of Jacob's ladder faith hope and charity uh, now I will direct your attention over to this episode on the Masonic round table because I thought they did a good job explaining that the the complication we run into with a text like the Holy Bible is that it has been translated and edited and so we run into things where like the word charity can have multiple meanings. The original form could mean love, could mean charity, and it's sometimes a question of whether or not we were meaning uh, to give love or whether we were meaning to give charity and in which way. Uh, now that's not to say that uh, the charity that Freemasons are known for today, the monetary giving and the giving of time toward usually uh, medicinal uh, types of efforts uh, have, they're good. You know, they should be there in my opinion. Uh, but I think there is a stronger message uh, in many cases if we consider charity to mean love. After all, the charitable act of giving uh, it comes from, I think, a root of love. So uh, I would encourage you to expound on that a little bit more. Uh, but the explanations given to us here in this lecture is that we are to have faith in God, hope in immortality, and charity to all mankind. With the greater definition that charity is the greatest of all. And here uh, we start learning lessons about um, doing things that survive ourselves. And I'm sure you've heard this story, be it in poems, in literature, in music, uh, or anywhere else. The idea that there's only so much you can do here on earth that's for yourself. The only thing that lasts once you die is what you've done for someone else whether that is charity or maybe that in in the sense of charitable giving and and the idea being that 
you were able to maybe through your giving help save a life uh, and that that life carried on and did good for someone else uh, maybe it is that you left and instilled something inside of a child a, another family member or someone else in general that carried on uh, in your uh, in your stead after your physical body dies. So here it says uh, the greatest of these is charity for faith may be lost in sight. That's very uh, understanding. We talk uh, a lot about that in the Holy Bible. It's it's faith when you believe that it could be true. Once you have proven that it is true, then faith is no longer necessary. Faith doesn't exist anymore. Uh, so faith may be lost in sight. Hope ends in fruition so you you hope you're going to accomplish a goal for example but once you attain the goal then hope is gone but charity extends beyond the grave through the boundless realms of eternity so that charity that you bestow uh, and I want to mention here you know charity does in itself have multiple definitions uh, one thing that springs to mind is in our digest of laws, the bylaws for our Grand Lodge, it mentions that when you're receiving the proficiency for a brother to determine whether or not he's eligible to advance in his degrees in Freemasonry, that that power rests solely with the Lodge, but that that power can at times be used charitably. So a lot of times we focus strictly on the monetary donations or the time donations that Freemasons give in the community uh, or to other organizations uh, but I think that charity can be used in those kind of ways as well and still be incorporated here in this lecture because if that brother feels like he may not be good enough but is accepted then how does he turn around and maybe treat somebody else because he learned that lesson and being treated that way himself and that is how we can perpetuate charity so I hope that uh, that gave you some things to think about we will continue in the third section and move on to the next portion in the next video thank you all so much for watching I appreciate you taking the time to watch and to share the videos we will see you all next time bye